like for instance, reparations, right? So let's talk about how reparations is, you know, it is absolutely necessary. But then when it comes to being pressed on it, you know, she doesn't really take you anywhere as to what she really wants to do. You're not going to actually get real answers from Kamala Harris this election season. Is she running for president? Yes. But it's really just going to be, I'm not Donald Trump. That's basically what it's going to be. And the thing is, we need more than just, I'm not Donald Trump. Let's look, here's, here's the problem. We black people have been led astray by the Democratic Party. Some people are not happy with Amanda. Oh boy. Amanda's feeling what we're feeling. Mm. And I'm going to tell you right now, Amanda, welcome to the club. All right. So actress, comedian, singer, all around entertainer, Amanda Seals has been very vocal about what's going on in Gaza as Israel pummels Palestine uh, into oblivion for really the purpose of land theft, right? Let's call a thing a thing. And now you have, now that Joe Biden has exited stage left out of the race, you now have Kamala Harris taking up the mantle, taking up the presidential nomination. Uh, she is the de facto Democratic nominee. And now that people like Amanda Seals have been very vocal about what's going on in Palestine, that Joe Biden has been funding this extermination of Palestinians, well, her ire has redirected to Kamala. Kamala Harris. And many people are not too happy about it. But is Amanda Seals correct? Let's take a look. So I would like to share with you guys what Amanda Seals has said. Uh, and we'll get into that right now. So All right. By the way, I like her hair like that. Her hair is really nice like that. Anywho, let's listen to what Amanda Seal says. Put in clips of Kamala Harris stating things. I don't need politicians to state things. I need politicians to do things. When I met with Kamala Harris after she summoned me, I said to her straight up, you talk out two sides of your neck and we don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Kamala Harris who's trying to shut me the fuck up. Cause oh. <laughs> she told her to her face. That you talk two sides, both out of both sides of your neck. That, my ladies, gentlemen, and gentle people, is what we call a read. But isn't it true, though? I mean, Kamala definitely is a politician. Remember back in 2020 when Kamala Harris expressed support for Medicare for all, right? The signature bill that somebody like Bernie Sanders said he was for, even Elizabeth Warren was like, I'm for Medicare for all too. Bernie is right, right? And Kamala Harris was like, I'm for Medicare for all. <laughs> and then Kamala switched. Remember that? Remember when she, Flip-flop. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, like Petridge Farm, I remember. And this is what Amanda Seals is talking about. People like Kamala Harris talking about two sides of her neck. So she told her to her face, right? Let's continue what Amanda Seals says. She's trying to shut me the fuck up. Because I told her straight up that I feel like she is disingenuous in her messaging. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, well, you're being too critical. And I said, I am a voter. I'm supposed to be critical. That's my job. And I want to see actions. She said, well, how am I supposed to talk about uh, racism in America without talk calling Americans racist? I said, well, first of all, there are many, there are many racist Americans, but there's also policy, legislation, institution, and systems that are racist that need to be addressed. They need to be addressed. And if you're not going to do that in an actualized way and in a loud, bold way, people will never really know where you're coming from. Well, you. That is true. Hang on. Let, let, let's, let's roll it back. Let's roll it back to what she said. This that need to be addressed. They need to be addressed. And if you're not going to do that in an actualized way, and in a loud, bold way, people will never really know where you're coming from. Well, you she, uh, well, you know what? This is true. Because especially when it comes to things like, for instance, you literally have to press Kamala Harris on things in order to get a real answer, right? You can't just take it at face value because the thing is, a lot of times they'll try to weave the politician the answer at you, like for instance, with reparations, right? So talk about how reparations is, you know, it is absolutely necessary, but then when it comes to being pressed on it, you know, she doesn't really take you anywhere as to what she really wants to do. You're not gonna actually get real answers from Kamala Harris this election season. Is she running for president? Yes, but it's really just going to be, I'm not Donald Trump. That's basically what it's going to be. And, and the thing is, we need more than just I'm not Donald Trump. Let's look, here, here's, here's the problem. We black people have been led astray by the Democratic Party. We have been told time and time and time again that, well, if you don't vote for us, the, the Republican Party is going to send you back to slavery. That's what they're doing. And it's like, well, we know that the Republican Party doesn't care about us. We see that all the time. But why are you saying that you care, but then your actions do not prove otherwise? And that's the issue that Black people have with the Democratic Party and now their de facto figurehead, Kamala Harris, right? Because every single time they talk about the marginalized, those of us that may be disabled, those of us may be black, those of us that may be LGBTQ, those of us that may be immigrants, no matter what, we are constantly told, I hear you and I'm with you, but then when we actually look for you to be with us, <whistles> new phone, who it is? What? When we look for you to be there, you ain't there. You gone. You like insane. Bye, bye, bye. And so this is the problem that especially a lot of us who are marginalized have an issue with Democrats. Because every single time 
we look for you to be there, you're not. And on top of it, you'll get some people who will defend the Democratic Party based on rhetoric. Or if they do do something, it's always linked to something that is not good for us. Or even if it's not linked to something that's not good for us, it's a half of a quarter of a measure. So this is why people like Amanda Seals are speaking out. And is she more affluent than the rest of us? Yes. But just like some revolutionary leaders, they also realize the class struggle. And Amanda Seals didn't do, didn't get that degree in African American studies for nothing. Let's continue. You can't tell me how I feel. So I'm not telling you how you feel. I'm telling you how you sound. Ooh. I'm telling you how you sound. Okay. The truth is that you should always, always question your source and what are their intentions. And what you all need to know is that I don't need to do any of this. I don't need to talk about any of this. So... As far as Amanda Seals, she went in on Kamala. This is out of the root. It says Amanda Seals, she called Kamala Harris what to her face after being summoned by the VP. So <laughs> this is funny. It says uh, on Saturday, July 27, comedian Amanda Seals lit up the internet once again with her commentary. This time, she directed her sights to Vice President Kamala Harris and recounted a meeting that Seals said took place between the two women. So it says a smart, funny, and black creator shared a video about her interaction with a presumptive Democratic nominee. She said, I don't need politicians to state things. I need politicians to do things. She then told a story of how Harris demanded to meet with her. She says, when I met with Kamala Harris, hang on, is this, can I get this out of my way? No, oh well. Says, when I met with Kamala Harris, after she summoned me, I told her straight up, you talk out of two sides of your neck and we don't know what you're talking about. I would be surprised if Kamala, I wouldn't be surprised if Kamala Harris who is trying to shut me the F up. Uh, she continues, says, Seals claimed she told Harris that she feels like she's disingenuous in her messaging. Uh, so basically, this is just recounting what, hang on. Uh, it says her video since gone viral on X with one user in particular challenging seals in her instance on constantly crusading for black people. Wait, what? Why would you get up on the internet and be against people that you said you were for? That's what I would like to know. Seals recently went viral for calling the assassination on Trump stage, then later retracting her words. Hang on. Hang on, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me. Lady said that she's. Crusading for black people. What does that mean? I mean. A black woman is speaking up for black people. What? Why is that? Why is that a bad thing? Oh, Lord, 
is it the fact that she actually went to your patron saint Kamala Harris? Look, here's the issue. When people talk about how Kamala Harris talks out of both sides of her neck, it's true. Like, I'm sorry, but some people do not like Kamala Harris, particularly because she is a politician's politician. Let me share this with you guys, because here's Kamala Harris basically on, on, on reparations. to recognize that everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the LIFT Act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit, which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So how will a tax credit give lift us out of poverty? My question is, how much in taxes are we really spending that can truly lift us out of poverty? Because, I mean, well, you know, in order to lift me out of poverty, you would literally need to quadruple the amount of disability benefits I get. May, maybe quintuple it. To help get my mom out of poverty, you would need to quadruple or quintuple the amount of Social Security benefits she gets. To help lift us out of poverty, you would need to uh, raise the minimum wage to a living wage so that people can be lifted out of poverty. To get people out of poverty, you would need to slash housing prices in this country. I mean, even just from a capitalistic perspective, you would need to increase the housing stock. And you would also need to have more public housing available to people. And you need to readjust the standards for which you consider to be the poverty line. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'll put it to you this way. Any person in this country that is spending, I say, more than 20% of their income on living expenses like rent or mortgage, you're in trouble. That's my personal metric. Now, uh, the metric that is standard in this country is if you do more than 30%, right? 33%. But a lot of people spend more than 33%. Most people in this country are probably spending closer to 50%, which means that these people who are making 50, 60, 70, even $80,000 a year, they're not doing good. So the level that we say, oh, you're in poverty needs to actually go up to where we're actually at. But the U.S., the standards don't, don't meet us there. If you really want to cut poverty for us, then you would be trying to actually push for cash reparations through the Department of Defense. It can be done. Special Field Order number 15 was already done. General William T. Sherman already promised it. It was rescinded by Andrew Johnson. So if it was rescinded by a president, then who can reinstate it? A president. Would that even would that even need congressional approval if it's done through the Department of Defense? I gotta ask somebody that. It might just need to be done through the executive order because it's done through the Defense Department. And the president is literally the commander in chief of the armed forces. Therefore, it is really at the discretion of the president. You can slash some stuff in the defense department, and it ain't gotta be all at once. You can you can you can give us annual checks. It ain't gotta be 
You know what I'm saying? When it comes to reparations, it ain't got to be all at once. We we accept payment plans. But the thing is, it's like, what are you doing? This is why this is why Kamala Harris be talking out both sides of her mouth. Hang on. Let, let's let's uh, let's continue this because we want to we hear the whole thing. Poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African-Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners, because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit Black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit Black people. No. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait a minute, minute, minute. Be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit Black people. No, because whatever benefits that Black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country. It was Ronald Reagan that signed into law the reparations that went to intern Japanese Americans. That was a law that specifically benefited Japanese Americans. Now, would reparations for American descendants of slavery, would that benefit Americans indirectly? Yes, yes it would, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is like you, you would need a policy for them because it's just like what James Farmer said back in 1963. He said that if black people were treated in a special way, in a negative sense, now you have to shift and now treat us special in a positive sense, meaning that because our labor value was stolen from us, you now have to, by a just way, give back that labor value to the people whose labor value was stolen. You have to give it back. And people like Kamala Harris just do not want to do that because she's with the system. Another thing I would like to share with you guys is also the fact that Kamala Harris is, she's down with the Zionists. She's down with the Israel lobby because ultimately she's never actually been for the people. I mean, need we say more about her constantly being invited to IPAC? Here we go. Our defense relationship is critical to both nations, which is why I support the United States commitment to provide Israel with $38 billion in military assistance over the next decade. Hang on. Provide... <clears throat> Israel with $38 billion over the next decade. Where's the $38 billion over the next decade for black people? She put a number for them. She gave them a number and made sure that it got to them. Here's one of my biggest issues. 
Kamala Harris is a black woman. She's also a Asian woman. She could be both. I'm not gonna question her blackness because to me, if I have to question her blackness, I gotta question black the blackness of some members of my own family, right? She is a black woman, but like many black people in the Democrat and Republican parties, they turn their backs on their community. This is the issue that Amanda Seals was talking about. The fact that someone like this would stand behind a state that is literally participation, participating in the extermination of an indigenous people so that they can get their land. What type of person is worthy of your vote like that? Also, just uh, somebody asked a really good question. Because for all the people that were against Joe Biden for funding the extermination of Palestinian people, but now they're shifting, they're singing a different tune now that Kamala Harris is the presumptive nominee, and now they're trying to push Kamala Harris. The question is, what is genocide still your red line? Was genocide ever your actual red line? Let's go here. I'm gonna take it even further. To all the people that are flipping now and trying to push Kamala Harris, I'm gonna say this and I look, I'm gonna be very, very raw and very real with you. You were never with the Palestinians in the first place. You actually just used the Palestinians to gain clout and followers and clicks. That's the only reason why you were with them. Because for you to switch and go, well, we should give Kamala a chance but and not see this? Y'all saw this. You've known this the entire time. And now that you're on the Kamala train, you're turning your backs on the Palestinian people? Are you kidding me right now? You were never with them. You never actually had solidarity with them. You never actually really cared. You just did it because it was popular. You weren't like us at RBN who have been talking about the Palestinian issue ever since we started back in 2021. You were never with us. You were never with them. It was just popular. As soon as October 7th started and people started talking about it, you just wanted to be on the right side of history for clout. That's one of the biggest issues. And now you're flip-flopping and trying to be Team Kamala and I'm with her? That's like the people who were Team Hillary Clinton and going, I'm with her, despite what happened in Libya. So this is one of the biggest issues that I have with Kamala Harris. On top of the issues that she has when it comes to those of us and how she treated us as black people, when she was the attorney general of California, how she made sure that the DNA, the reinstitution of DNA evidence was denied against a black man that was on death row that would have cleared his name. Yes, that Kamala Harris. And to all my LGBTQ siblings that are go, well, we just want to vote for harm reduction and we don't want to vote for a guy that is against us. Kamala isn't for y'all either. They're not for, she's not for us. Want to know how I know? It's in her record. Let me share this with y'all too. Kamala Harris doesn't care about us LGBTQ people either. This is out of the appeal. It says, incarcerated transgender women's lives must matter. As Kamala Harris begins her presidential run, this was back in 2020, her move to block gender affirming surgery for an incarcerated transgender woman deserves scrutiny, especially as new cases highlighting the struggle for rights of imprisoned trans women emerge. 
It says when Kamala Harris announced her run for president in January of 2021, as a reporter asked her about the 2015 case of Michelle Lael Norsworthy, a trans woman incarcerated in California's prison system who petitioned prison officials to grant her request for gender affirming surgery. It continues. In 2015, Harris was California's attorney general and her office filed a request in federal court to halt a court ruling that ordered Northworthy surgery, arguing that, quote, there is no evidence that irreversible treatment is immediately necessary before this appeal can be heard, end quote. Nearly four years later, Harris didn't answer the question about Northworthy. In a response to the reporter, Harris replied, quote, it was an office with a lot of people and I do wish that sometimes they would have personally consulted me before they wrote the things that they wrote. Yes, I do, end quote. Harris then added that she would work behind the scenes to ensure that the Department of Corrections would allow transitioning inmates to receive the medical attention that they required, they needed and deserved. It says Harris moved to block the surgery was unsuccessful, Norsworthy was the first incarcerated trans person in California and the second in the United States to win a court ruling that granted a request for surgery. But Harris's motion to stay the judge's mandatory preliminary injunction, ordering prison officials to provide her with sex reassignment surgery as promptly as possible is representative of the way which the carceral system acts as a site of gender and sexual control says prison officials frequently deny access to gender affirming care, including hormone therapy and gender surgeries, in addition to gender affirming clothing, cosmetics and speech therapy. Transition related medical care is often not understood as health affirming and necessary despite demonstrable improvements to the quality of life of many trans people who desire it. As medical groups and government agencies, including American Psychiatric Association and U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, acknowledge the necessity of transition-related medical care, arguments made by the likes of Harris limiting access to it become even less defensible. Also, of course, she did a heel turn afterwards, but ultimately, because she was the attorney general, the buck stopped with her. So, yeah. The final say always comes to you at the top. So when I say that Kamala Harris does talk out of both sides of her neck, oh, yeah. Black people know about it. Those of us who are LGBTQ know about it, especially the transgender women in prison. They know about it. Disabled people know about it because some of those kids who were truancy, well, some of them were disabled. And of course, she went after parents who had also some of them had disabled kids or some parents were of very little economic means. And so it's tough to keep an eye on your kid and also working. And so Kamala Harris really has not been a friend of people, particularly working people. This is why I think it's ultimately in our best interest to reject somebody who is anti-worker like Kamala Harris, who is pro-genocide pro-Palestinian extermination like Kamala Harris. And make no mistake about it, people like Kamala Harris are also going to continue the U.S.'s role in, in enforcing its uh, unipolar power, its hegemonic power around the world. Look what's going on in places like Congo and Sudan, right? Look at what's going on. Uh, we'll be talking about it in Venezuela, how the United States really is trying to um, undercut a completely valid election that was won by Nicolas Maduro. You don't think Kamala Harris wouldn't try to support that, support the undercutting of a 
a, a fair election? This is who she is. Kamala Harris is a lot like Donald Trump. You're going to get one of the same. You're going to get the same thing. Either way you go. This is why I say leave both parties. They do not serve you well. They will not serve you at all. And if they do serve you, it will be a police officer with a billy club over your head. This is why I think it's important for us to walk away from America's or, well, yeah, America's top cop. In the end, Amanda Seals was right. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content, that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.